Okay, so uh, now we're on unit two. Uh, let's see here. Navigating, working with GIMP. Here we go. <clears throat> we're going to develop an understanding of the tools used in GIMP, and we're going to navigate in GIMP. And you know what? I bet you there's a test on this one. Let's go back to the beginning. This is a breadcrumb trail. You can follow it back to get to where you are. Let's see. Yep, there's a quiz. So whenever you have a quiz, here's what you're going to do, and I want you to do this right now with me. You're going to right click on that quiz and you're going to open it in a new window. So do that right now. Okay, and then you're just going to get that quiz started. Any way you do it. I'm a teacher, so mine looks a little different. And I'm going to uh, make that so that I still can see the entire question and I still have a scroll bar. And I'm going to just move that over. And then I'm also going to minimize that a touch. So I can see both my test, my quiz, and unit two. So this is how you do it. All right, so unit two, working with GIMP. I'm gonna read the questions really quick because that's a good test taking strategy. Question number one, what is the name of the GIMP window that contains a set of icons to select the tool that you want to use? Which of the following is not a selection tool? What is the type of tool you can use to change the direction, quality, and size of an image? What is the name of the image window area that identifies the project you are working on? What is the name of the image window area that allows you to determine if a line is truly horizontal or vertical? All right, you ready? We're gonna be looking for those answers. Here we go. In this lesson, you'll navigate to the different the different windows in GIMP and explore the tools available in the toolbox. Multi-window mode. When you open GIMP for the first time, it opens in multi-window mode. Well, mine didn't. Mine opened in single window mode, so maybe that's not true for you. This means that different parts of the program are scattered across your screen. You can move these parts around on your screen by dragging them. Explore the activity to see to which how to switch between multi-window and single window. Okay, so I already showed you that. You just go to Windows and you can just click there. Okay, so single window mode is my personal favorite. You can decide what works for you. Single window mode, having many windows open at one time can create confusion when working. To make working in GIMP simpler, change to single window mode. This will keep all of the windows together so that they are not independent of each other. And I just showed you how to do that. The five main windows in GIMP. When you open GIMP, you will notice two panels on the left, two panels on the right, and an image window in the middle. Let's explore. So this is the main toolbox. And then down below you have your tool options and then you have your layers, channels, and paths undo. And here you have your brushes, patterns, and gradients. Okay. And then this is just your main image window here in the, win in the middle. The main toolbox. The main toolbox contains a set of icons so you can select the tool you want to use. Hmm, that sounds really familiar. Look at our quiz. What is the name of the GIMP window that contains a set of icons to select the tool you want to use? Why, it's the toolbox. Bravo, bravo. Tool options. The tool options window is below the main toolbox. Here you can change the options for the tool you have selected. And you'll see how to do that later, but let me just show you right now that if you click on any of these tools, you'll notice that they all have their own options, right? Okay, and so you can just go through and click on those. And when you hover your cursor over the tools, which isn't working for me right now because I'm making a video, so how I can free up my RAM, because remember we talked about that, is I'm just gonna have to Ooh, I don't think I'm gonna be able to free up my RAM. There, it's working. So free select tool. This is to select a hand-drawn region with free and po polygonal segments. Here is your fuzzy select tool. Here is your color picker tool. Here is your paths control. Here is your, oop, slowing down. 
There's your crop tool. If you want to move something, you have to actually use the move tool. All right, this is your rotate tool. This is the scale tool to make it larger or smaller. Here's shear. Here's a perspective tool, a flip tool, a transform, a text tool, a bucket fill, a blend tool, which really just is making a gradient. It should be called a gradient tool, a pencil tool, a paintbrush tool, an eraser, an airbrush, an ink tool, a clone tool, one of my favorites, a healing tool, perspective clone tool, a blur or sharpen tool, a smudging tool, and a dodge and burn tool, okay? So um, that's the toolbox. The tool options are underneath. What, what happens sometimes is people lose their tool options. And to get them back, you just go to Windows. This is where everything's at. And I know Dockable Dialogues is probably the most unfriendly name. It could just say, you know, Docs. And we'd probably be able to go, oh, I can find my Docs there. <laughs> but um, it's called Dockable Dialogues, and this is where you'll find all of the different types of Docs that are available. So here's your tool options. If you ever lose them, they're in there. Here's your layers and your channels and all kinds of different things. And if you ever lose your toolbox, that can happen. If you ever lose this toolbox, just go to Windows and click Toolbox, okay? Try to remember that. <laughs> it's all in Windows. Now, where were we? Image window. The image window is where you work on an image. You can have more than one image open at a time. The layers, channels, paths, and undo window show the layer structure of the image. The options in this window allow you to manipulate the image in a variety of ways. And of course, we'll learn about that. The brushes, patterns, and gradients window is below the layers window. Here you can manage the different types of brushes, patterns, and gradients. Toolbox overview. The toolbox is a comprehensive, co comprehensive collection of tools used to quickly perform basic tasks such as making selections or adding text. You use a tool to manipulate an image in the image window. The tools can be categorized by the tasks they perform. The five categories of tools are selection, paint, transform, color, and other. You'll learn about the tools in the other category as you need them. Selection tools. Selection tools allow you to select regions of an image so that you can work on one specific area of an image at a time. Each tool has its own individual use, but most share some common features. Selection tools. Let's take a look at some of the commonly used selection tools. We'll start with the rectangle. By using the rectangle, you can select portions of your image that are either square or rectangular. As you see here, we selected the sunflower and it has a square image. When I click in this image, then I can work within this rectangular or square image. The next is the ellipse tool. The ellipse tool will draw an oval or a circular selection. Here you can see the circle and we would work inside this circle. The free select tool allows me to choose my selection by drawing. I can start in one spot and I'm going to draw around the center of this flower using my mouse to connect the dots. And now the center of the flower is selected. The fuzzy select tool allows me to select individual colors. By clicking on one of the petals, it'll pick only the petal and the portion of that petal that is the color that I selected. The select by color option allows me to click on any color in the picture. It will select all the portions of the picture that are that color. The scissors tool allows me to select objects or portions of the image by connecting different lines. I can click in one spot and then continue around the object until I complete it by coming to my original starting point. Paint tools. There are 13 paint tools grouped together. Oh, hey, you know what? I just realized. Ah, question number two. 
Which of the following is not a selection tool? Is it the rectangle, the ellipse, the free select, or the paintbrush, which is not a selection tool? Okay, so remember, if you hover your cursor, this is a select tool, this is a select tool, that's a select tool, that's a select tool. Now what about the paintbrush? Is it called a select tool? No. So the answer would be paintbrush. Good job. What is the type of tool you can use to change the direction, quality, and size of an image? That's what we're looking for next. But first, the paint tools. The feature they have in common, the 13 paint tools, is all of them are used by moving the pointer across the image you're working on. This creates brush-like strokes. Let's take a look. Let's take a quick look at some of the paint tools available. We'll use our lasso tool and we'll draw a circle around the middle of this flower. This will be our selection that we use the paint tools for. You can see the color is blue, so let's use the fill bucket. By clicking on the fill bucket and then inside our selection, you can see that it turns the middle of the flower blue. We'll undo this. Now let's look at the blend tool. If we click on the left hand side and draw across to the right, you can see that it blends the blue and white colors in the middle of the circle. We'll undo. The pencil and the paintbrush are pretty much the same thing. So we'll use the paintbrush. And you can see by using the paintbrush, we can free draw a pattern or we can write. Again, we'll undo. Let's look at the eraser tool. By using the eraser tool, I can erase color in the picture. And notice that it only allows me to go inside the selection that I have chosen. Now, let's use the fill bucket again, and we'll fill in where we erased, and you can see it put in blue. Let's use the smudge tool. We'll smudge the blue and the yellow together, and you can see it's not as distinctive as it was before. It's more of a natural smudge that allows the blend to look more natural. Excellent. Next, transform tools. There are eight transform tools that you can use to modify an image. These tools allow you to change the direction, quality, and size of an image. Let's take a look. Transform tools. Let's take a look at the transform tools. Using the image in the previous video, let's look at moving the image around on the screen. I can drag it and drop it wherever I want it. Let's look at the crop tool. By clicking on the crop tool, I can drag a portion of the picture and crop it to the one that I want to work with. I'm going to go ahead and undo this. Let's look at the rotate tool. By clicking on the rotate tool and then changing the angle, I can easily rotate my picture or the selection to a certain degree. We'll undo this. Now let's look at the scale tool. With the scale tool, I can make the selection bigger or smaller. By clicking on the scale tool, it'll bring up the scale menu. I can change the width and the height, and you see that it makes the selection bigger. We'll undo this. Now let's look at the shear tool. The shear tool will cut off pieces of my selection. So I can increase or decrease the X and Y magnitudes, hit shear, and you can see where it trims off part of the selection. Looking at the flip tool, all I have to do is click on my selection and it automatically flips it. Excellent. So question number three, what is the type of tool that can be used to change the direction, quality, and size of an, of an image? Transform! Very good. Color tools. The color tools allow you to manipulate image colors in several ways, including modifying the color balance, turning to black and white, and making an image brighter or darker. Let's take a look. Color tools. Let's look at the color tools. By clicking on the tools menu and then selecting color balance, 
it'll bring up a menu. Let me drag it so that you can see it better. The color balance has to do with the individual colors in the picture. I can increase or decrease the color and you can see the effect that it has on the image itself. We'll go ahead and cancel since we don't want to keep this. Let's go look at hue saturation. We'll move it over so you can see it. Hue saturation has to do with one individual color. Let's choose yellow and we can increase or decrease the color of the hue, the lightness of the hue, and the saturation. And you can see the effect it has by changing these values. Let's go ahead and cancel this out. Now let's look at Colorize. Colorize has to do with changing the overall picture to one specific color. And we can change the hue to make it brighter or darker. The saturation to make it deeper. And we'll cancel. Now let's look at the brightness and contrast. We can make the overall picture brighter or darker by using the scale again. We'll slide one way or the other. Sliding to the left makes the picture darker. Sliding to the right makes it brighter. Adjusting the contrast makes the picture duller or sharper. We'll cancel that out. Now let's look at threshold. Threshold gives us an outline of the picture. I'll move this so you that you can see it better. The more intense I make it, the more of an outline the picture has. We'll cancel this out. Let's look at Posturize. Posturize actually reduces the number of colors. So we can move the slider to the right or the left to determine how many colors are in the image. Look at Desaturate. Desaturate is where it takes all the color out of the picture. This is the tool we would use to turn our picture to black and white. You're working on an image of you and a friend. You like the picture and want to have it framed. The picture is currently in full color. Which of the following types of tools would you use to er turn the image to black and white? What should be your first step in solving this problem? Selection, paint, transform, or color? I would go with color. Woohoo! Excellent, 2.02 .02 working in the image window. The image window is where you will spend the majority of your time working on your images. The image window contains the image you have open and is where you will use the tools to make changes. The following pages will give you a brief description of the most commonly used components in an ordinary image window. You can remove some of the components by using commands in the view menu. And the next question we're looking for is, what is the name of the image window area that identifies the project you're working on? Let's see if we can figure that one out. The title bar in the image window identifies what project you're working on. Ding! This class is so hard. All right, if you do not have an image open, the title bar will display GNU Image Manipulating Program. If you have an image open, it displays the image name and the specifications associated with the image. Take a closer look at the title bar. There's the title bar. Oh, and look, it's saying what's open, sunflower.xcf. What's our last question? What is the name of the image window area that allows you to determine if a line is truly horizontal or vertical? The menu bar directly below the title bar is the menu bar. You can use the drop down menus to access nearly every operation you want to perform on an image. Or if you right click on an image, a pop up will appear which gives you image options as well. Explore some of the names of the menu bar to see the drop down menus. There's the menu bar. File, edit, select, view, image, layer, colors, tools, filters, windows, and help. 
the file menu. This is where you can create a new uh, GIMP window. Uh, you can create a new GIMP file. You can open, you can open as layers, you can save, you can save a copy, and then export down here at the bottom is a pretty big deal. If you wanna turn your GIMP project into a JPEG so that people can actually see it, you'll have to export your files. The edit is where you can undo and redo, and this is where you could cut, copy, paste, paste as, the select, so anything having to do with those selection tools, you can select all. You can, if you have those little marching ants going around and you're trying to figure out how to get rid of them, this is how you go select none. <laughs> and uh, you can invert your selection. So let's say you selected the little circle in the center of the flower and you wanted to actually select everything else, you could just invert your selection and now everything except the circle would be selected and uh, et cetera, et cetera. The view window, this is where you can zoom in and out. The image, so this is where you can transform. I think in mode, you can actually go to a grayscale so you can change to grayscale, I'm pretty sure, using mode. You can scale the image, and this is a very important uh, thing to understand how to do. To scale an image means to resize it. So sometimes when you have a photograph, it's huge. And um, if you actually uh, showed it on your screen in 100% size, it would be so big you couldn't even see the whole thing. So this allows you to scale your images down so at 100%, you can actually see the whole image. Layer, so this is where we're gonna learn about layers. You're gonna be layering things. So let's say if you wanted to layer a flower on top of a box, on top of a table, on top of a blue sky. So you could have four different layers and all of those components come from different images that you've selected and cut them out like a collage. Colors, this is where we see all of those color tools that she was showing us. There are some other tools here, selection tools, paint tools, transform tools, zoom, measure, text, so filters. Filters are really fun. Play around with those. And then once again in Windows, this is where you find all your docs, your toolbox. Okay, and then help. <laughs> There's probably a user manual in there. Rulers, the rulers are shown above and to the left of an image. You can use these rulers as guides. If you click and drag a ruler onto the image, you can accurately position items. You can also use the rulers to determine if a line is truly horizontal or vertical. Explore the activity to see how to drag a ruler onto the image. So you basically just click and drag over to the right. So let me just do that right now. I don't have anything, so I'm just gonna go new, and um, I'll just go okay. Ooh, my RAM is running out, there we go. Okay, so if I want a ruler, I just come over here to where the ruler is, click and hold, and just bing, I can, I can drag rulers over. Let's say I wanted to make that tic-tac-toe and um, do the rule of thirds, right? I can just, Go like this and create my thirds tic-tac-toe box with my image so I can kind of see where I want to line things up so that I'm trying to get things to line up on the um, intersections of the thirds lines or just making sure things are lining right up on those lines themselves. Now what happens when you don't want to see those anymore? You just are going to Click here where it says show guides. There, now it's not showing the guides anymore. And then back to our test, what is the name of the image window area that allows you to determine if a line is truly horizontal or vertical? Rulers, excellent. So make sure you save all your responses and submit your quiz. And let's finish up the lesson real quick. So the units menu, the units menu is used to change the units used for rulers. You can change the units to inches, centimeters, and several other possibilities. Explore the activity to see how to change the units to inches. So 
down here at the bottom, this will show you. See, if this image right here is showing at 100%. If it's showing at less than 100%, you've got a problem. That means the image is too big to fit into the, the viewer. So you're gonna have to go to that scale image that I talked to you about, and we'll learn about that. And then here is where it's, it's set in pixels, and you can click the drop-down menu and you can change it to inches. I like to look at things in inches because it's easy for me. I know how many inches is in a foot and it just helps me to be able to visualize how big something is. The zoom button is used to zoom an image in or out. You can enter the level of zoom you want directly into the box for precise control. Explore the activity to see how to change zoom from 100% to 200%. So once again, that's down here at the bottom. You're just gonna click the drop down box and you have some options, or you could just select that area and enter in um, how you want it to zoom. So now it's at 200%. Why would you wanna zoom in on an image? Well, let's say that you're trying to select and you wanna get a really close selection. If you zoom in, it helps you see what you're doing a lot easier. The canvas, the main part of the image window is the canvas. It is the central area of the window and is surrounded by a yellow dotted line. This yellow dotted line shows the image boundary on top of a gray background. All right, we just finished. Woo! And it looks like we will not have time to do unit three in class today, unfortunately. So what you're going to do then is you will uh, take your exit ticket quiz and uh, watch the next video to figure out how to do that. Thank you.